So, we're here. Um, well, not here, but here. The Portuguese aquifer is not now, you had one job. Moving on. And we're going to talk about water. Like, not this water, obviously. More like groundwater, yay! Okay, it's kind of obvious. I, I think we're all in the same page, right? Anyway, this is the Great Artesian Basin, the simplified pocket 101 version. Let's begin. The Great Artesian Basin spans over four territories of Australia, covering an area of 1.7 million square kilometers, which corresponds to 22% of the whole country, equivalent to the area of 18 Portugals and countless populations of emus, making it the biggest artesian basin in the world. Also, this aquifer is up to 3 kilometers deep in places, making it the deepest aquifer in the world. Now the funniest part, geology. <sighs> The porous rock formations of the Great Artesian Basin belong to Triassic, Jurassic and Early Cretaceous periods, being constituted by permeable layers like sandstone and impermeable layers like mudstone. This creates what we call a confined aquifer. Basically, you punch a hole in this aquifer and water comes out. That's what we call an artesian well. But no worries, water can be recharged, mostly in the east flowing to the west and south parts of the basin and feeding an array of rivers and lakes. Speaking of water, the Great Artesian Basin is estimated to have a capacity of 65 million gigalitres of water. Its residence time range between thousands and two million years and its temperature go from 30 to 100 degrees, which makes it wonderful for producing geothermal energy and boiling potatoes. Now let's talk about fuses and some history. So when some guy found out that groundwater was a thing, people started settling their communities away from rivers, springs and lakes, since they could just create another borehole to find the water they needed. From agriculture to livestock, the Australian steam train network and the industry, everyone needed water. And since most of Australia is a huge desert, no wonder this aquifer was under a lot of pressure. So what did people do? A. Try to use water as efficiently as possible because they did not have any before and it was a gift from birth. B. Did not abandon wells in order to prevent contamination and water waste. C. Did not open new uncontrolled wells. The answer is actually D. Did not care about it. Did the exact opposite of what's mentioned in the three options above and prayed that drinking water would last forever because magic exists. So yeah, people overexplored the aquifer and some other resources like coal seam gas to the point that some artesian wells were not so artesian anymore and contamination became a problem. What a surprise! Old timers have an interesting way to approach things, huh? Fortunately, the Australian government said, well, that's enough, and started a thorough assessment of their water resources by doing many studies and improving their regulations and policies and even created official organs to take care of the issue like the GABCC, or Great Artesian Bayesian Coordinating Committee for people not curious enough to search the name on Google. Shame on you. And for everyone's surprise, things got better. By the way, do not forget to leave a like and check the video's description if you wish to learn more, but yeah, most of you won't, so heh, I tried.